Despite the outcry on social media last week that 1Password got Sherlocked with the announcement of Apple's Password app, 1Password has a trick up its sleeve that I don't see coming to other password managers. And I was actually unaware of this feature until a few weeks ago when I was listening to the Syntax podcast, uh, specifically an episode with Andrew Burkhardt from 1Password. He mentioned using 1Password CLI for environment variables, and I was floored, and I wanted to share that with you. Using sensitive information like API keys and the like is challenging. Storing them in .env files is fine until you forget to put that in your .git ignore, and suddenly you share that with the world. And if you're familiar with 1Password, you can create an entry for each of your environments and each different piece of information that you don't want to share somewhere else. So let's take a look at how you can do this. All right, if you've seen 1Password before, you've probably seen something that looks like this. And here's my API credential that I want to access. And it's super secure. I don't want anybody to see my credential or my second credential. I don't want to store them on my hard drive in unencrypted format. That's where 1Password comes in. And this is really cool. Traditionally, you know, you'd make a .env file and you'd put your key in there. Something like that. And you'd save this. You'd make sure it was in your .git ignore and you'd hope for the best that someone didn't come along and find it on your computer. So this is the old way that I used to do things. And once I found out about 1Password, it changed everything for how to store credentials. So we have our credential here. We have credential one and credential two. Uh, don't want anybody to see this. It's my credential. Shh. How do we access this? How do we get this into our terminal? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the 1Password CLI installed. If we get out of this and take a look, uh, we can check that we have it installed by running op dash dash version. We can see it's installed. I'm on a Mac. If you don't have it installed, the easiest way I've found to install it is with brew. Brew install 1Password CLI should get you there. All right, so we've got it installed. Everything's set up. The one other thing that we need to check besides having 1Password installed is that in our settings, we have the command line interface checked. So integrate with 1Password CLI. With those two things finished, we're ready to go and actually use this in our terminal. So we'll close this. How do we go about using this? Well. Once we turn on that CLI option, we have this option to copy secret reference. The easiest way to see how this works is by using op read. So if we run op read and we paste that credential that we just copied, we can see here the URI. The URI points to the vault that it's in, as well as the actual item within that vault, and then the specific item that we are looking to return. So we can see I'm in the development environment, my API credential, and then the credential that I want to return. When I press return, you'll notice that one password prompts me just like I'm accessing a password. It says, hey, you know, iTerm wants to have CLI access. I can authorize it. Once I have authorized it, now we can see our credential. So just like that, we're using this credential. It's never stored unsecurely at rest. That's pretty powerful in itself. So we can read credentials. How do we go about actually using them? Well, let's take a look at that environment file again. If I say vi.env within our environment file, we'll set up key one, we'll set it equal to that value from our API credential. And that's all we need. Now we can use OP to run this file. So there's a couple different ways that we can run it. We'll give this file a save, and then we can use OP run to call our env file in .env, and we'll just run something simple like print env key one. When we run this, we'll notice that I didn't get prompted because I'm within that timeout window, but 1Password has concealed that information. It doesn't want it displayed. If we needed to use it within the application, it would use it right here. If we want to see it was actually run, we can pass it in the no masking option and run that again, and we'll see that our credential is available there. The other way that we can use this, if we don't want to use it in a .env file, but we want to use it within an environment variable, we can do something simple. Here you can see I'm just exporting key two with the second credential, and then I'm going to run op run with no masking so we can see what the value is. Print EMV again just to show what key two is. When I run that, you can see my other top secret key, which if we take a look here and reveal this, that's what credential two was. And there you have it. Anywhere that you would store sensitive information, you can use one password and store that information in a secure manner. I don't know about you, but that seems pretty powerful to me. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'm going to try to start dropping more information, things that I find useful on this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.